topologies, you need to mentally get ready to uh, have, have a very important paradigm shift when it comes to topologies. You see, I find a lot of students will go, oh yeah, I know all about the topology, and they'll be referring to the physical topology. Right off the bat, I need to distinguish the logical from the physical here. You see, a logical topology, and let me get out of the way, a logical topology doesn't refer to the physical connections and the physical hops from device to device. Instead, it refers to what the user thinks, right? Like, okay, I'm over in sales and I'm gonna access some resources from finance. So their vision of what happened is, I was in sales on a computer and I obtained some things from finance. It's a logical bird's eye view, if you will, without all that level of detail. Now we need to distinguish this from physical topologies. And as a matter of fact, to help us, there are standardized physical topologies that we can follow. As you can see, they're represented, not as beautiful uh, as our graphics department does, but they're typically represented in objects that you'll see that look like this. And each of these physical topologies is going to have particular strengths and particular weaknesses. The most common topology that we see, or one of the most commons for years, was the bus topology. And we can see here in the bus topology that the signal travels down this straight line and radiates to all the devices. And then we need something called a terminator to actually terminate the signal on this bus. This topology is magic. And yes, that was a reference to the song Magic Bus, for those of you that are paying attention. All right, so the bus topology. I want you to draw this on one of your flashcards so that if Cisco were to show it to you, you would be able to recognize it. Just like I want you to draw out this star topology and make it on a flashcard. In the star topology, you've got this central point with everybody connecting to that central point. Now notice there is an, uh, an issue here with the star. If the device, the central point of connectivity in the middle were to fail, uh-oh, yeah, all of your topology is doomed. How might we deal with this single point of failure? Well, there's many different ways that we're gonna to talk to you about in this course, but one of the things that we can do is, is come up with this snowflake, or as it is more commonly called, an extended star topology. Suddenly, I feel like the weatherman. But anyways, in this extended star topology, notice that's more than one node connecting out to machines, and obviously there's some measure of redundancy built into the extended star. Once again, I would want you to be able to draw this out, and if I were to show you this in an exam environment, within seconds I would want you to tell me that this is the extended star. Now, a lot of people have a misconception about the next one. They say, oh, Anthony, a ring topology? Are you kidding me? A ring topology is something that has gone the way of the unfortunate dodo bird. It's extinct. No one would use a ring topology anymore. I want you to be careful. What that person is saying is that the classic example of a ring, token ring, that has gone away. Yeah, that's true. But understand that the ring topology with its dramatic single point of failure, the ring topology still might be used. Where do we find these topologies today? In some fiber optic mediums. Fiber optic, high speed, and somewhat fragile mediums will use a ring topology. In fact, a lot of them have dealt with the single point of failure ring topology issue by organizing multiple rings. So they'll do a dual ring, and notice in this dual ring that the traffic will actually flow in opposite directions. So they solve the redundancy problem that we had with a ring by setting up this dual ring. Very much alive today 
and as I said, often used in fiber optic type environments. Now notice one of the words that we've been using over and over again as we look at these physical topologies. You'll notice that I'm using the word redundancy. Redundancy is a hugely important concept to us here in CCNT or in any Cisco networking. Can the network survive some kind of a failure? Okay. Is it, we like to say, is it robust? Is it reliable? If there's some kind of a failure, will it continue to operate like it should? Well, one of the most redundant physical topologies that you can have is the full mesh. The full mesh topology is one in which we're going to have every single node connect to every other node. Whoa. Why wouldn't we just do this all the time? Well, now wait a minute. If your network is big, in fact, you need a lot of scalability, to use that word we used a moment ago, the full mesh network, when we add new nodes, we have to make sure we get a connection to every other node. This is an administrative nightmare. So you bring on a new location like, uh, like Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and now for Oshkosh, you've got to connect it to every other network segment that is out there. So this tends to be expensive from an administrative overhead type uh, of view, and it tends to be very difficult to manage. What we can do instead of the full mesh is we can organize a partial mesh type of an implementation. Notice here, we do have multiple connections to multiple modes, but not every single node is going to connect to every other node. Now, do you remember earlier on when we were taking a look at one of our wonderful network diagrams, I promised you that as we wrapped up this lesson, looking at the functions of a network, I promised you that I would mention all of the wonderful ways there are to connect to the internet these days. Well, we've arrived at that discussion. And this is...